what we're talking about in this micro lesson is um, how to get into flow. And this has two parts. So the first part is something that you will have heard about, but, but you might or you might not have this in place. And if you don't have this in place, then I'd like to invite you to try it. Um, the first thing is a ritual. So when you are about to write, what ritual do you have that alerts your subconscious to the fact that you are going to write and you wish the taps to be, the faucet to be turned on full steam ahead um, so that you can just get that conscious mind out of the way and let the flow of words flow. So what I do when I'm going to write is I have a candle and coffee. This is my, it smells nice. It has to smell nice. It's no good if it doesn't smell nice. And so I light my candle and I get my cup of coffee unless it's too late in the day, in which case it's going to be tea. Um, and that is my little ritual. And I don't always do it. You know, if something catches me by surprise then I'll just write it, I'll scribble it in my notebook. As you, most of you know, I wear this very attractive thing every day. It's the first thing I, it's one of the first things I put on every day. It has my notebook and a pen in it. So I've always got something to write on because I don't always want to go on my phone. So, you know, make sure that you have something handy to capture those moments. But if you have a ritual, then you can begin to rely on yourself and rely on the fact that you're going to know when you want to start writing and your subconscious, your, your whole system is going to support you in that. So sometimes it can be a certain time of day you know, that can be helpful, like maybe by eight o'clock, you like to be sitting in a certain place with a certain window view out of the window or a certain blanket if it's cold or, you know, a certain cup. Anything that you do repeatedly constitutes a ritual and it's a great way to bridge that moment where you don't have to think about, do I want to write? Do I know what I'm going to write about? You just think about, I have to get to my writing spot and execute my ritual. And let's say that you've chosen 8 a.m., um, then your subconscious is going to prepare for you. It's going to get stuff ready for you and that's when you'll, you know, you'll be surprised when things pop out onto the page. So that's step one. Step two of getting into flow. Um, flow is basically, there's a TED talk about it and um, a psychologist, a positive psychologist, Mihaly, I can't say his last name and I apologize for that, um, my bad. Um, but if you look up Mihaly C, positive psychology flow, it will pop right up and there's a TED talk about it. And he talks about six or seven different conditions that characterize the state of flow. And you will have been in flow. You've been in flow tonight. Um, we get into flow in all kinds of different ways. You know, we can read and get into flow. We can sing and get into flow. We can cook. We can play golf. We can sweep the floor. You know, you can really do anything. Um, and what it is, is where you lose that sense of yourself and you're just completely absorbed in what you're doing. Um, and writing first draft is the perfect kind of flow because one of the things he says is you don't want something too easy and you don't want something too hard. So when we're writing, we have to let go of expectations, right? Because we don't know what's going to pop out. We don't know what level of, um, completeness it's going to be, what the sentences will be like. Maybe it's going to be really rough, maybe it's not. Um, so we just have to let go of all of that and just think about the character or think about the thing that we want to say, the point we want to make, and just get it down on the page without any expectations. So that's something that we'll, we'll practice tonight. I think we have a few minutes to give it a go. And one of the things I wanted to invite you to try, um, it can be a wonderful thing to get into flow and write about something that makes us feel wonder or something that makes us feel awe. Um, this is something that we want to have this ability as writers. We want to know that when we want to write about something wonderful, wondrous, that we can do it and that we can take the reader to that place. You know, it's one of the, the 
one of many human emotions and we want to be able to engender that in our reader and the way to engender it is when you feel it yourself so sometimes when we're you know we're busy we're stressed we're like we're the furthest we could ever be from a feeling of wonder or awe um, and a way to get to to get closer to it is to go to curiosity first so you would sit down, you go through your ritual, you say, okay, I'm going to write for 10 minutes and I'm just going to see what comes up. I'm going to see if I can get to some state of wonder so that this scene that I'm about to write, perhaps you're writing something that's set um, in a garden or, you, you know, it doesn't matter where it is, there can, you can always put something in that setting that is, um, that, ingen that inspires wonder. Um, so we can go to curiosity first and that can lead us to wonder. So for, we'll just do a quick exercise where today we'll just get curious about something. So if you have a setting that you'd like to use, perhaps it's the setting that um, a setting that you've written about recently that maybe you haven't got very much depth or detail on that setting or maybe it's a setting that you know you want to use um, and so let's just take a deep breath and breathe out press away all the stories that we tell about ourselves let's forget about ourselves as writers the readers don't care who we are as a writer you know they really just care about their experience with the words on the page um, and let's either think about a setting that you know you'd like to write about, or if you don't have one, I'd invite you to think about a garden. Um, you know, we're, most of us are experiencing summer right now, so when I look out of my door, I see abundant grass and plants that seem to be growing as if they've had, you know, I don't know what poured on them, but they are multiplying magnificently. Um, so imagine that you're looking at a garden and imagine that your eye becomes a camera and choose something to zoom in on. So in a field or you go with your setting if you have your own setting. Um, for those of you who are in a field you can visualize the grass, the flowers, the insects um, and let's zoom even closer in and let's look at a flower with bees on it. So you go to your setting, you zoom in on something, and then you imagine that you're a child, just have a sort of a childlike wonder and pretend that you know nothing about this situation in your scene or in the garden. Let's say we know nothing about bees and flowers and we're just excited to learn. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen here um, with this picture that I found, which just really, I'm following my own interest and what you would do is you would follow your own interest, the thing that's really compelling to you. So I came across this photograph of a bee on yellow flowers, buttercups I believe, and yellow is my favorite color. So when I looked at that I was like, oh that's gorgeous. And if I was to set a character in this scene I would either investigate the flowers so that means I would make sure my identification was right. I would look up a buttercup and then I might look up the parts of a flower, which I know I should know, but I've forgotten. So the stamen and, you know, all of that stuff. Um, I might go that route or I might go to the bees. You know, I might look instead. Um, I actually did Google. There's an article called how to identify different types of bees. So that I thought was kind of interesting. So I was following my interest and um, you could have your character be in this field and notice for the first time, you know, maybe one of those great big purple, what are they called, ilium, allium, allium, great big purple flowers with, with bees in them. You know, and you could have your character notice this for the first time. So let's take a few minutes right now. Think of a setting. Think of a setting that you've written about or one you'd like to write about. Grab yourself a fresh piece of paper or open a new document. And I'm going to set a timer just for, say, two minutes. And write as much as you can think about, about that setting and what is amazing to you in that setting and what you might investigate 
when you have a bit more time later on. So I'll set a little timer on your marks, get set, go.